Hello, this is Ling Ling Settlement. Um, I have done one video about Canadian children passport application. Now today I want to talk about Canadian adult passport application. In this video, I will talk about two parts. First, how to fill in the application form. Second, the required documents for this application. Now let's look at the application form first. Um, if you don't know well to find this application for or download this form, you can Google search the name Adult General Passport Application or you can put their application number PPTC153E. And every time to be careful about the number of the application form or the version of the application form, be sure to use the latest, the newer version of the application form. Okay, so first session, personal information. So here, surname, let's say AA, the given name, BB, all formal surnames. If not, you just put not applicable. Mother's um, surname, at birth, let's say um, DD. So all the information here is fake, just for reference. Uh, here, travel date. If you do know the date, you can click here and put a month and a day. But if you don't know, then you just click on no. Place of birth, let's say Toronto, country. Oh no, um, let's say place of birth is um, Beijing, country, China. And uh, some countries, they don't have um, provinces, so this is uh, um, applicable. If you don't, you don't need to choose anything. Date of birth, let's just say 1980, January 1st. Uh, gender, let's say female. And uh, natural eye color, um, brown. Height, let's say one. And be sure here, type or print in capital letters. Yeah, so let's change this too. Uh, current home address, let's say one. Here, one. Queen Street. And a city, Toronto. Province. Ontario. Postcode, let's say 1x1, x1x. Mailing address, if the same, you don't need to fill in this part, but if it is different, uh, please fill in the mailing address here. Okay, so this is um place for the signature, and you need to sign within the border, and the date, and the place, and the province. So this part you need to handwriting it. We cannot type here. Session 2, declaration of the guarantor. And uh, the name of your guarantor in the passport, like the last name, let's say um, EE, given name FF, date of birth, let's say and a Canadian passport, let's say a one, two, three, four, five. Relationship to the uh, to the applicant, you can say um, friend. Um, date of issue. Um, let's say twenty twenty January first expire. First telephone number. Current home address, okay. second Queen Street, Toronto, Ontario, postcode 2x2x2x. 
So here, session, the signature, and I have now the applicant for how many years, date, and assign that to the city, province. So this part, the guarantor needs to handwriting it. And uh, so how many years, that means the guarantor knows you, applicant, for how many years. And uh, for the requirement of, of like to be a guarantor, we needed to look at the instruction later. Session three, previous Canadian travel document. If it is the uh, first time for you to apply for the Canadian um, passport, then probably you needed to click no. But if you do have like say um, refugee travel document before, then you needed to check yes and uh, give the number and a date of issue. So let's say it's no. And uh, if you do have the Canadian travel document in the past and uh, you needed to check uh, yes or no to determine whether you wanted to keep this um, destroyed or uh, uh, expired um, document. Session four, proof of Canadian citizenship. Um, normally, uh, you know, the people was born outside of Canada. Then you land um, immigrant to Canada. And once you meet the, um, you know, uh, Canadian citizenship requirement and uh, you got the Canadian passport. So to be completed, if you were born outside of uh, Canada, then provide one of the documents. So normally we check certificate of Canadian citizenship and put the citizenship number, let's say, and a date of issue. Uh, to be completed, if you were born outside of Canada between 1977, February 15, and uh, 1981, April 16, inclusive, uh, but you don't need to complete this session if you were presenting a certificate of Canadian citizenship issued after 2007, January 1st. So normally, like say, if you wanted to apply the um, Canadian passport now and you got the um, certificate of Canadian citizenship like half a year ago, then you don't need to fill in this part. Session five, documents to support identity. And you needed to provide at least one document to support your identity. And this ID must be valid and issued by the federal, provincial, or territory government. And the ID must include your name, date of birth, signature, and a photo. So in that case, you can uh, put your, let's say, um, drive license and um, document number and a data expi let's say your name or also you can choose a health card they also do have your uh, have the picture name and date of birth signature on the on the on the card and uh, now you needed to sign here and also uh, sign the date if you apply in person the original document will be validated and returned to you but if you apply by mail provide a copies of both sides of your ID and have them signed and dated by your guarantor so I recommend you to apply um, this application in person because you don't need to wor to be worried about loss of those IDs or any some um, important uh, documents because if you applied by mail you needed to uh, submit the original um, certificate of Canadian citizenship these kind of important documents on uh, session six period of the validity uh, so you can either choose five year or ten years of your um, Canadian adult passport. Section seven, additional personal information. Address is in the past two years. If it is same as your current home, then you click here and you don't need to fill in this part. But if it is different from current home address and you need to choose this and complete the, this session. 
occupation in the last two years. So it it um um it, it is about your employment. So it's full time or part time or in school or education or other activities. So you can choose depends on your situation. Let's say I was employed, then you needed to give the details of the employment. Let's say A A X X company. Address, let's say, 3 Queen Street, Toronto, telephone, um, the field of the employment or studies, let's see, IT, and from Let's say you start this job uh, uh, in 2020, but you still are working in this uh, company. You can say present. Eight session uh, references. So provide the two persons as uh, re your references, but these two persons cannot be your relatives or your guarantor, and they has to be uh, they have to be 18 years um, of age and over and uh, have no you at least two years so you can choose your friend let's say um address Telephone number, email address, and uh, has no you for how many years? So they said at least two years. So yeah, like at least two years and above. Let's say five, three years. Um, another friend. And let's like say five years. So they said that they must agree to have their contact information provided as they may be contact to confirm your ID. So the make sure the um, phone number and email address are you know are the are correct because the government of uh, officers probably will call them to make sure your ID. Session 9, emergency contact information, this is optional. You can choose to fill in those information or you don't need to fill it. But if you choose to fill in those information, you need to sign here and date here. Okay, so that's the end of the application form and we look at the instruction here, required uh, documents um, checklist. So all three pages of application form completed and signed with the last 12 months and the two photos within the last six months when certified by the guarantor. So one photo your guarantor needed to sign. Proof of Canadian citizenship original only. Documents to support ID original or corpus. So if you uh, applied in person, then you just needed to bring the originals. But if you apply by mail, the uh, Canadian citizenship should be original, but the ID can be copies. But the copies must be signed and dated by the guarantor. Any valid Canadian travel document, passport, certificate of ID, or refugee travel document issued to you in the past. And the fee, application fee is here. Five year 
one hundred twenty dollars, ten year one hundred sixty dollars. Okay, now let's look at the the requirement for the guarantor. So the guarantor is a person other than the applicant who can confirm your ID, and、uh, this person can be relative or someone living at the applicant addresses. As long as they meet the requirements. So for the guarantor, you can choose your family members if they meet the requirements. So the requirements are、uh, able to communicate in English or French, be a Canadian citizen, eighteen years of age or over, hold the valid Canadian passport, and have been sixteen years of age or over when the applicant was submitted for this.、Um, Passport identified in the section two on this application form, and I have know you for at least two years, and I know you well enough to be confident that statements you have made on the application are true. So that basically means the person ah、uh, has to know you very well, at least two years and above. So this is a photo specification. You needed to present this to the photo、uh, grapher to let them know what's the size of the photos for the Canadian passport. And uh, this pa uh, this photo must be taken within the last six months from the date of your application. Okay, so this is a.、Um, um, Uh, roughly, like、um, references for you to fill in this application form. Now let's go back to review the required documents for this application. The application form for PPTC one five three, two photos, one signed by guarantor. Application fee five year one hundred dollar one hundred and twenty dollars, ten year one hundred and sixty dollars. Original Canadian citizenship. Original IDs. So these are mainly for apply in person, but by mail, the original、um, citizenship and photocopies of IDs signed by your guarantor. Any valid Canadian travel document issued to you. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for your watching my video, and hopefully this is、uh, helpful for you. And if you like it, please click the like. Thank you. Bye.